Okay, the first uh, video I'll show is a superglottic laryngectomy using the LISA laser, and I, I think uh, the benefit from the, uh, the use of that laser is reduction in airway edema. So at the end, you'll see that we're able to extubate the patient uh, in the operating room. So. <clears throat> This is a, um, a T2 or maybe an early T3 lesion with uh, minimal preepiglottic space involvement. Uh, you see the blade, this is a different blade that was used yesterday, but the blade is placed within the molecular, uh, lifting the base of the tongue and exposing the superglottis. So the LISA laser is used to make the initial cuts up into the preepiglottic space. This can be carried as, high, uh, as, as far anterior as the hyoid bone, and it can be brought all the way down to the superior edge of the thyroid cartilage. I like to perform an on block resection, as I said earlier. <clears throat> and, uh, and so what we have in this case is uh, unlike uh, the TLM procedure where you only have really one instrument in your field, we have four instruments in the field. Uh, my assistant has a suction uh, and also some retractor in, the, in another hand. Uh, I have a Maryland dissector here. Let me move that off. Maryland dissector here. You see the epiglottis being pushed down, and then I'm using the LISA laser. Again, this is a near contact fiber, and um, it has good hemostasis qualities with coagulation, but very little heat generation, and so the edema is minimal. If we do encounter vessels during the procedure, it's very easy to apply hemoclips. Uh, I use the laryngoscopy clip appliers, the single. Um, clip appliers that are shaped uh, to the left or to the right, and my assistant can pass them transorally by using the monitor. The, the on-block resection allows for us to do both a, a direct incision approach and also an outside to in approach. And so here's removal of the tumor in the epiglottis, and now I'm coming back and I'm excising uh, uh, margins from the patient. The specimen is, was oriented in sense pathology. I'm coming in now and taking margins from uh, the paraglottic space. Uh, the, these are the false folds that are being resected here. Uh, thyroid cartilage comes all the way out to this edge here. There's a little bit of a spot of some sort of condensation on the scope and so uh, it does block the view but the surgeon has a binocular camera so I'm able to uh, proceed. Now here is the view of the glottis then at the final part of the operation. You've got your laser tube here and you've got the, the cords and you see this resection was carried all the way then into the ventricle on either side. And uh, so it's a full superglottic laryngectomy uh, remaining only with the retinoid and the true cords on either side. We have edema of these cords. I, I can't tell you if with this patient if I left the patient intubated I don't remember exactly uh, um, the case for this specific patient, but typically when I do use the laser, it's unnecessary to leave the patient intubated. I have a superglottic laryngeal where I use a bovi. So the case has already started. Again, the retracting blade is up here. My assistant has an additional retractor suction. I've got the Maryland eye sector in the bovi. In this case, there was a pre-epiglottic space involvement, and so I carried this all the way out to the hyoid bone. Now I'm making my cuts posteriorly along the airy epiglottic fold, uh, in this case on the right side, and then I'll at another point I'll do it on the left side. As I mentioned, um, the approach to these cases can be done both from inside out to outside in. And so on this situation, I'm on the outside working in. Here's the edge of the thyroid cartilage here. So this is carried all the way out to the thyroid cartilage and you can even skeletonize that tissue. If you're doing a hemilaryngectomy, you can continue and remove the arretinoid and cord off the cricoid cartilage. And then I take the thyroid cartilage out as a second piece. I don't take the thyroid cartilage out with the primary soft tissue portion of the specimen. Here's my cut then on the left side along the airy epiglottic fold. And I can carry that just the anterior to the vocal process of the arachnoid. 
coming all the way out again to the thyroid cartilage and taking this tissue off the inner aspect of the thyroid cartilage, taking the anterior attachments off so the, the specimen can release and pull posteriorly. And then finally, my cuts are gonna enter the ventricle and I often will enter the ventricle from the outside in. I can make those initial cuts anterior to the retinoid, but I'll make that ventricle cut from the outside in and the specimen is then delivered, delivered uh, in an on block resection with all of the pre-epiglottic fat uh, remaining on the specimen. Now I come in, I take margins from the patient, uh, again, while that's being tested for frozen section analysis, in case there are additional uh, margins required, I already have my margins ex excised. And that was the final view then of the, uh, of the larynx. I know those are quick edited videos. Typically, as I mentioned, I try to keep a TORS operation less than one hour. I don't like to keep the patient suspended, so this done with TLM would take me almost three hours to do typically. With, with a robotic procedure, not having to adjust anything, I'm able to do this in less than one hour. I wish you had shown us the suspension of the retractor. I was very keen on The suspension of the retractor is exactly the same as what you've seen. From the outside of the mouth, it's just the FK retractor with the mouth open. I use a different blade than what Dr. Gannon was using yesterday. Again, he was limited on his selection, uh, but I use, it's a, it's a flat spatula type blade with a gentle curve, and that entire blade is about the width of the base of tongue, and it fits into the molecular and lifts the entire base of tongue up. You can, you can spin a dial, toe in that blade even more, so it lifts the epiglottis up in the air. One of the problems that Dr. Gannon had yesterday with his suspension is the epiglottis was pushed against the posterior pharyngeal wall and it made it very difficult for him to see. But if you're able to suspend this patient, uh, uh, I, I'm gonna, I, I will show you, because we didn't see a lot of that. Let me go back to um, this presentation and I can show you a little bit of the suspension. So I suspend the patient on a, uh, a bar. This is the Carl Stortz laryngoscopy suspension system. It is connected to the side rail of the operating table. And this bar has a uh, universal joint here and a joint there and a joint there. So there are three joints. So the position of this arm is infinite. It could be in any direction that you want. I have a C-clamp uh, attached to this. Now the FK retractor, this is the first generation. The second generation looks a little different but there is a post that comes off of this. Now, Dr. Gannon had this post uh, uh, attached to a suspension arm that was pressed onto the chest. And it's difficult to get good suspension when you're using the chest to suspend. But I'm able to take this post and by placing the C-clamp on the post, I can lift that patient almost, I can lift their head almost off the table. It's that effective. And suspend the patient. There is another suspension in the arm, and it comes with the FK if you purchase it. That's an extra, extra purchase with the FK that attaches to the side rails of this cage. You don't get the same lift as you get if you're, if you're suspending off of this post. If you suspend here, you don't get that torque of, of lifting it up. And so if you have the opportunity to buy something, do not buy the one where you attach it here. Just go to Carl Stortz and get this laryngoscopy suspension arm. I can give you, if you email me, I can give you the product number uh, uh, off the side of this. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I mean, this, this really makes a huge difference in terms of, especially if you're in a super lot, like this, this patient here um, actually was not one of the videos I showed, but this is a super glottic laryngectomy patient. So this is exactly how the exposure and suspension looks. And you can see I've got a laser tube here, so I'm, I'm going to do uh, use the least laser to do the supraglottic laryngectomy on this patient. Yes, so I always place a tongue suture in the anterior aspect of the tongue so the tongue can, can be pulled out of the mouth. And I put, if the patient has teeth, I put a guard or I use gauze over the lower teeth as well as the upper teeth so that the, the, tongue, the tongue is not um, lacerated by the teeth when the tongue is, because the tongue is shoved against the teeth, and if you don't have something soft there, it, it will make a laceration. You are using oral tracheal so did you put a, 
find a suture or it could be posterior? Yeah, so in this case, with an oral tracheal intubation with a laser tube, to keep the tube um, secure and kind of out of my way, I will, I will suture it to the palate or something like that. But if you, in the video I showed with the uh, sleep apnea, I've gotten away from this. I do nasal tracheal intubation and I cover the tube with a, with a cotton right now. So I protect the tube that way. So I don't have to suture the tube anymore. The, stu the tube is out of my way. Yeah. And how we apply the clips. And then uh, Dr. Ganim's going to show the free button. I'll be finished with my video. So this patient has a T2 uh, right base of tongue tumor. And so again, the patient is suspended um, in a similar fashion with the FK retractor, except there's a notch cut out of the FK retractor on the right side that allows for the prolapse of the right base of tongue into the field. So in this case, I'm making my first cuts along the lateral pharynx and, and tonsillar sulcus and working inferiorly. I'll make my cuts my anterior cuts along the uh, base of the tongue and um, work in a uh, anterior to posterior or superior to inferior, depending on how you want to call the orientation uh, direction. You can see that I'm definitely into tongue musculature. This is this is not a case where, like we were with a uh, lingual tonsillectomy or with a sleep apnea operation. And here is a branch coming off of the lingual artery. This is a smaller branch, and so my assistant comes in with the uh, laryngoscopy clip appliers. I'll put multiple clips on a vessel uh, on the um, on the feeding side of the vessel, and and uh, and then typically a single <coughs> clip then on the proximal side of the vessel, and I'll divide between uh, those clips. It's nice using the spatula bovi because that helps you identify these vessels, and you can use the spatula bovi, bovi to dissect the tissue away from the vessels so that they're exposed uh, um, adequately. Here's the epiglottis, so I'm coming along basically the midline portion of the base of tongue. And the tumor is excised, and now I'm gonna go and take margins from the patient. Now, Luca Calabrese is an Italian surgeon in Milan, and he has written a paper about uh, compartmental base of tongue surgery, and that is, uh, if you have a tumor, typically they're unilateral, you, you take the entire compartment of that base of tongue out. So you go directly to the midline uh, for this cancer operation. You create a box. The hyoid is anterior, the midline is your uh, midline. And in this case now, I'm taking margins from all of, of, of those uh, sections of the box. And I show this because uh, I didn't do this for demonstration purposes, but it actually turns out to be a nice demonstration. I end up uh, identifying here, um, coming up on the clip, the, the main lingual artery, and there it is. So I'm very lateral. Don't ask me why, but I punctured a hole in it and uh, sprayed it on the, on the um, uh, camera. So my assistant is coming in and is gonna place the clips on, uh, again, this is the main lingual artery. This is not one of the side branches. And I think uh, my Maryland slips here and I sp spray the, um, you know, I let go. So I spray my scope, it comes out, my assistant wipes it clean, and we get back in and we continue with control of, of the uh, uh, clipping the vessel. <coughs> As I mentioned, it's important to place multiple clips um, on, on the patient and if my assistant was having a difficult time and I wasn't satisfied with the clip replacement, I could pull my head away from the console and these instruments would freeze in their, in their position and I could apply the clips myself. Now, it's like a tourniquet. There is no bleeding at all because the, the um, blood supply uh, has been eliminated to that base of tongue and I continue with my last margin. As I had mentioned at the end, then I'll, I'll place surgiflor um, or flow seal into the wound, pack a gauze in there for a few minutes to help with some of the generalized oozing. So that's how, um, uh, how we control vessels when they're encountered during the operation. Uh, even for this, there's no trach done? No, no trachotomy.
So I always use a 30 degree for basic tongue resection.